What is going on, everybody? It's your boy, G.S. Luke, here with our round two prize picks targets for this week's Rocket Mortgage Classic. Going to cover how I expect the course to play, some of the research I'm putting into my slip making process, as well as my top three props here for Friday's golf. So first off, round one, a little bit of a crapshoot in the morning is actually really going well for us. I ended up hitting nine of the 10 props that I put in, and in the afternoon, ended up going four for four. It was a 50-50 hit rate on my part which mostly was due to the wind to the weather you know I have my little cop-out excuse there but you know all jokes aside it was blowing at about 25 to 30 miles an hour which was well above what we projected a whole day and a half before so you know sometimes the weather gonna turn on you cost you some money but we've learned we now have a better forecast here for tomorrow and we should be able to try and avoid some of that carnage and take advantage of like I said in the morning what were extremely predictable lines so I'm looking forward to it or go ahead and start this off with a look at the golf course and then afterwards hop over to the weather and finish it up with our top three picks so first off with the golf course today played at 1.3 shots under par now that doesn't really give you the full picture because if we split this by wave you'll see that it was quite different depending on when you teed off in the morning wave played 1.92 shots under par whereas in the afternoon just two-thirds of a shot under par which is still well easier than tour average plenty of birdies to be had out there but you wanted the guys in the morning that absolutely took the place apart just to give you an idea of some of the rounds i mean tony finau and taylor pendrith both shot minus eight guys like webb simpson cameron champ also lee hodges and michael thompson all played in the morning wave along with somebody like matt wallace siwoo kim somebody like callum Turan, actually, I believe a lot of these guys at minus five did play in the PM wave, but if you wanted a minus six or a minus eight round, a true ceiling performance, you wanted the guys that were going off early, and it makes sense. Those are when the greens are the most pristine, also when they're the most receptive. They haven't been out in the sun all day, baking out and getting a little bit firmer and faster. All of the water that's been put on them overnight to make sure that they're in tip-top shape is still going to be there. It hasn't evaporated, and as a result, they're going to play a lot easier. You see that at pretty much every single tour event, but particularly for round one, that was evident. And the same thing that you saw in round one with the wind, is also going to be present here for Friday. So if we take a look at the split, you'll see on Thursday, it was pretty calm in the morning and the afternoon, got to that 14 to 16 mile an hour range in terms of sustained winds. For Friday, you'll see it's five to six miles an hour in the morning. In the afternoon, not quite as severe, but still in that 10 to 12 mile an hour range. I would expect the conditions to still be a lot more receptive in the morning. And on top of that, with the slight advantage that is coming with the uh, wind there as well, I would expect the morning wave to play at least a shot easier, right? Today it was 1.3 shots, but maybe tomorrow with a slightly you know, less differential, or I should say smaller differential when it comes to the wind gusts, um, it might be a slightly smaller gap, but I'd still want to be targeting the guys there in the morning that are going to be in the most pristine and perfect conditions. With that being said, what props am I taking? So first and foremost, let's start with the birdie or better board where I'm taking Cameron Young over five birdies. Now he completely screwed us today, but it was mostly a byproduct of the conditions. He was playing in winds that were twice as strong as the morning, if not three times as strong, sometime there right around 4 to 5 p.m. And as a result, he really didn't have a shot to get to five birdies, right? There were scrubs in the morning that weren't even playing all that well that made five or six birdies. Guys that shot minus two or even minus one in the morning wave that were making five birdies. Cameron Young, up until hole number 18, had no bogeys on his card. It was minus two. Ended up bogeying 18, which was the result of a bad drive. His only bad drive of the day, pretty much. So really, his minus one record looks a lot worse than it was in reality. When he goes out there with receptive conditions, with his length, you know, it's not going to be a problem for him that he's not getting much rollout. I mean, he's still getting it out there 300 plus yards, which means when he's hitting into these par fives and they're going to play a lot softer than they did this afternoon, you know, he's not going to have a problem getting there. And when he gets there, because they're receptive, it's going to sit. He's going to have eagle looks tomorrow. So with that length, I'd expect him to be one of the players to take advantage of that. And even though he's at five birdies, we need him to get to six to hit there. 
I'm comfortable with that. I project him well over five birdies. In fact, closer to 5.45 birdies, so almost five and a half birdies. Not making it appear a lock for him to get to six, but still something I see plenty of value in. And realistically, all he has to do is get that hot putter, right? If he gets something to drop from 15 to 20 feet um, just once, maybe even twice on the round, he is going to comfortably get past that five birdie mark if not get to something like six seven or eight birdies next up we've got harris english different situation down here at four birdies in fact he's at the lowest on the board tied with ricky fowler and he's going off in the morning wave which obviously just like cameron young that's extremely important with getting to both of these plays but more than anything Harris English is a birdie maker to begin with. Relatively high birdie or better percentage, great putter, also a relatively long player that in the soft receptive conditions, much like a Cameron Young, should have some opportunities for Eagle. And given how good of a putter Harris English usually is, I expect him to be able to at least get down in two for a birdie. So, you know, another player that I'm expecting to be able to take advantage of receptive conditions. And there are four birdies. I mean, just to get to a push, right? Just take care of the par fives. They're all relatively birdieable, let alone some of the quote unquote drivable par fours, the par fours that are in that 375 to 400 yard range where you're going to have a flip wedge in if you had a good drive for somebody like a Harris English so get it before it gets bumped it might get up there to four and a half like a lot of the other players in the morning wave but as is at four is one of my favorite props on the board and lastly the last guy we'll talk about is going to be Mr. Ain't No Hobby himself where we're taking the under on Kevin Kisner at 69 and a half now today shot even par he needs a solid round tomorrow to morning, you know, tomorrow morning, he's got to be able to go out there, you know, make the cut, shoot something like three to four under par. And when a player's motivations are in a line with what we need to get them to get to as a better, that is something that I'm looking forward to, right? Because we want that motivation to be there for the player. And for Kevin Kisner, we know it's going to be in the past. This course has been an absolute gold mine. He's three for three and made cuts, has a couple top 25 finishes, and overall has gotten better here over the years. So the fact that he had this struggling first round, even in the windy conditions, was a little bit surprising to me. And obviously, a hit and under at 69 and a half, he does have to get to minus three, but I'm comfortable with that. He's a clean player very solid with his short game. So if he does get into trouble, I'm more than confident in him saving that, let alone if he goes out there, you know, is clean with the ball striking and shoots something like four to five under par. I think that's also well within his range of outcomes. So somebody I'm confident getting to, in fact, he's definitely in my top three top props for tomorrow. Um, Harris English is my number one prop for tomorrow. Cameron Young also up there. But of course, if you're looking for access to all of the props that I'm taking, which at this point is, I believe, 12 at last count there's always you know time for late ads people to get added or subtracted into the pool based on bumps so make sure you check out my patreon page to get access to all of those there is a link down in the description of this video um, to go out and do so you also get access to the discord you know able to ask me any questions also interact with the rest of the community which is a solid 200 members strong at this point a lot of bright-minded individuals down there you know able to share their knowledge too so it's just a it's a great deal there you also get access to the DraftKings projections, all of my modeling for four-round contests, um, all of the betting tools that I'm putting together and whatnot. So it's a all-inclusive package that uh, I think you guys would uh, definitely get a lot of value from. So, But that's all I've got here for my round two video. We will be doing round three and round four videos for the rest of this tournament, but also putting out picks for the Live Golf Tour. So they'll be combined videos where I'll be getting over maybe like two or three of the picks for the PGA Tour, talking about two or three picks for the Live Tour, um, wrapping up a video together and pushing that out there. So it might be coming out a little bit later as a result, but look forward to that at some point, probably right around like 9 p.m., maybe 10 p.m. tomorrow night. Um, we'll have you covered for the next few days. But best of luck with all of your slips, all of your DFS lineups if you're going that direction too. Make sure you smash the like button before you hop on out of here. And also comment down below what your favorite prop on the board is. But other than that, guys, that is all I've got for you. Let's get this cash.